Hey Tips and Lessons Dolls, my name is Alice Guy and welcome back to Coming Out on Top. Last time we fucked a pop star and that's all we really did. Monday. You just can't believe how quickly time has been whipping by this semester. Tuesday night. Alright dude, we gotta talk. What are you gonna do tonight? Hang out and chat with Slurpee again? Why? Jealous. You're crazy. You think I'm jealous because you're in here talking to your fish? So, we talk. Never underestimate the value of a good listener. You're scaring me, dude. We have a connection, Ian. Slurpee gets me. I'm not sure you do. Hey, sad fish. You can't even give him a scratch behind the ears. Oh, yeah, I can pet him. You can pet him? <coughs> I'm obviously so disgusted by that that I had to burp. Wow. I just stick my hand in the bowl. He swims right over and lets me pet him. This I gotta see. Show me. Ian, he's not a circus animal. Slurpy is a loyal and trusting companion. I'm not making him do a stupid parlor trick just to prove a point. Oh my god, dude, whatever. Ian throws his hands up in the exasperation and walks off. Try to pet Slurpy. Sure, one moment. We'll see if I, I can pet you, right, Slurpy? I know our relationship's been purely intellectual up until now. It'd be sheer greed on my part to decide more than scintillating discussion. Here's Slurpy. Yeah, boy. Slurpy appears to scorn your aggressively attempt at <laughs> scorn your aggressive attempts at fiction. I hope I'm not smiling, you Slurpy. I know you need some space, but I just wanted to be close. You better come here when I call you freaking fish. I own your ass. <laughs> I own your ass. Slurpy backs away, but his eyes fill with fear. Oh no, I feel bad. What oh, is it, rage? Affection? Love? Hey? Maybe I shouldn't have gotten a pet with eyebrows. <laughs> Whatever the case, you and Slurpee Slur seem to have lots of permanent connection. <laughs> Fine, I'm just going back and fixing this then. Fuck you. There we go. You spend the rest of the night trying to gently caress your fish. To a disappointment, Slurpee won't let you get within an inch of him. Wednesday night. Well, that was a better ending than the one before. <laughs> I shouldn't care about a fish. But it was so easy to fix, so I just... Eh. Wednesday night. Your attempt, your attempt to become the fish whisperer continues. Slurpy? I'm sorry I was so insistent on petting you the other day. I understand that these kinds of things can't be rushed. It's like growing a rose or making a fine stew. It requires time, patience, and most of all love. I realize now that I took the wrong approach. So here you go, buddy. Here's my hand. See? Come to me, Slurpy. If you're ready. Take your time, it's alright. It's alright buddy, it's me, Mark. This is actually what you should do with a bird by the way. Just like let them get used to your hand and then eventually they'll be curious and want to approach you. Slurpy, don't swim away. I just wanted to be buddy Slurpy. Uh, Ian, I'm almost scared to ask, but is Mark still trying to pet that fish? You should have a talk with him. You talk to him. No way! He's starting to act like my crazy uncle, the one we were told to never look directly in the eyes. We gotta do something though. He's really weirding me out. Alright, keep an eye on him. If this gets worse, we'll have to take an intervention. How bad did this get? Another quiet evening. Um, it's Tuesday night. How dare you? Just, you know, go talk to Jeff. Talk. You look at Slurpee's bowl and feel drawn to it, more strong than you ever have before. Maybe your roommates are right, maybe you've started to lose it. And yet, and yet you feel something come over you. Something raw and untamed calling up to you in the reach. I have a bad feeling. Reaches of your mind, a response emanating from the depths of your heart. Stop talking to Slurpee. No, says he's a good little guy with a big heart. Ah, uh, you know what? If my suspicions are correct, I really want to fucking see that, so we're going there. Thank goodness for your steadfast friendship, Slurpy. One day things will be different. I don't know how, I don't know when, but it's gonna be just you and me, old friend, with nothing standing between us. And knock at the door interrupts your thoughts. Yeah? Hey, dude, mind if we come in for a sec? Sure, come on in. Don't say anything, Slurpy. Mark, we really need to talk. Ian and I are both very worried about you. And not just as your roommates, but as your friends. We want to discuss you and Slurpy. Yeah, dude, the thing is, oh my god, yes, speaking of Slurpy, you guys have to check this out. You dip your hand into Slurpy's tank, wiggle your fingers, and begin humming. 
Your voice oscillates between three different registers in a distinct pattern over and over. I don't know. What are you doing? Shh, you have to rise up within your process. Penny and Yen stand, staring aghast at the bizarre, bizarre spectacle. But within moments, Slurpee swims over to your hand. You stop wiggling your fingers and spread them apart. Slurpee then darts and slaloms through them back and forth. Once you know what true love looks like, watch. You build out a marvelous falsetto note. Nah, I don't know what a falsetto sounds like. Slurpee then stops swimming at your index finger. Finger. This cute little mouth touches your skin. Fishy kisses. Fishy kisses. Ian, don't encourage him. Encourage what? Really, that was super cute. It does sound kind of cute. My God, just said you're disconnected from reality in favor of spending time with your fish and um, Penny. His name is Slurpy. Yeah, Penny. His name is Slurpy. Fine, forget it, Mark. Ian, you're worthless. Penny storms off. Well, I'm glad you finally understand what Slurpy and I have, Ian. Uh, what is that, dude? Slurpy and my relationship might not be conventional, but that doesn't make it any less real or meaningful. There's a deep wisdom in the sea, in the being of an animal, in not having your mind cluttered by society's rules. Okay, listen Mark, that was a cool trick and all, but Penny kind of had a point. This is, well, weird. You don't understand. You don't have your own Slurpy, Ian. What's that got to do with it? I see you eyeing Slurpy's bow. Don't tell me you aren't. Don't worry, Hamilton, no one's gonna steal you from me. No one wants you. What? What? Whoa, dude. Well, you want my Slurpy for yourself, don't you, Ian? To use for your own nefarious purposes. I knew it! Get out now! <laughs> Ian puts his head down and quickly as ex exits the room. Friday. What? Penny and Ian have kept you at arms there since the fishy kisses incident. You've been feeling strange lately, especially when you're alone in the confines of your room. You can't put your finger on it. Is it your grown social isolation? Maybe I should talk to Slurpy about it. He's always got something interesting to say. No, no, we're diving deep into this fishy business. Hey, little guy. Mark? Mark, can you hear me? Yes, of course I can. I can always hear Slurpy. Good, because I want you to listen closely. There's something I'd like you to think about, Mark. Ah, yeah, I can feel another nugget of wisdom coming on. Lay it on me. Pearl of oh, wisdom, Mark. Wisdom doesn't come in nuggets. Oh, right, sorry, Slurpy. You're so smart. Last night, when you were sleeping, I noticed you tossing and turning. In fact, I noticed that almost every night, it's obvious that something's been bothering you, Mark. Yes, well, I think it's just that, don't speak. I know what's bothering you. Being an outsider observer with the luxur with luxury objectivity, it's quite easy for me to see. You came out as a gay man, and at that moment you felt a freedom. A freedom in being who you really are. But that feeling was temporary, and it too will fade. For you realize that even though you'd freed that single aspect of yourself, you were still a slave in a million other ways. Do you understand, Mark? I think so, but no buts. The masters still loom over you, Mark. Every thought you think, every word you speak, every single thing you do. Everything that you'd ever done and been has been orchestrated by them, by the masters. What, Norse gods or something? They gave you your words, they told you how you could and could not use them, and from there, the result was inevitable. Another slave to help build the empire of conformity. Do you enjoy being a slave, Mark? Uh, no. No, I don't. No one says that they enjoy being a slave, but the truth is that most people do. If it means that they get to fit in and not be alone, most jump with the chance to be a slave. But not you, Mark. I know you're different. I sense it in you. I sense the urge for freedom. Do you know how a slave can become free, Mark? I don't know, by fucking a fish. Please tell me, Slurpy, but we can read on and pray me if your family member can uh, crack command to uh, um, Please tell me, Slurpy. By all means, you are ready for the truth. It doesn't matter if you unshackle the chains from your arms and legs. It doesn't matter how fast you run. As long as the masses live, they will find you. They will bring you back and beat you until you submit. There's only one solution, Mark. And that is for there to be no masters. No masters? If there are no masters, there are no slaves. It's a very simple equation. No masters means 
No slaves? Exactly. Say it with me. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. Again. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. No masters, no slaves. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. <sighs> Wednesday night. Ian and Penny hang out in the living room watching a movie. As you walk to the kitchen to fetch a snack, they say nothing. Remember two Slurpee's rules. Never reveal your true intentions and appear weakest when you are at your strongest. Hey guys, can I get in on the movie action? You want some of this kettle corn? They give each other a look, alarmed by your apparent norm normalcy. Uh, sure, have a seat, dude. So, Weed, what are we watching? The Simeon Project. It's about a neurosurgeon who's... Oh. It's about a neurosurgeon whose anthropologist's wife dies while, re re while, while rescuing an injured gibbon. There we go. So he takes his wife's brain and implants it in the gibbon. That sounds hilarious and amazing. Really touching. It's great. He's teaching her how to use a fork right now, but she keeps throwing it across the room. Eventually he's going to teach her how to love again. Wow, amazing. Really amazing. That's great. I love rom-coms. Falling in love and laughing are awesome. I love any kind of comedy. Comedy is like the Sriraka of the entertainment world. You can mix it in anything and it makes it better. Except maybe porn. That's just weird. I agree. <laughs> I have watched some weird porn once in a while. <laughs> oh, Mark, you seem like you're in a good mood. How's it going? Not bad. Starting to keep up in a couple of classes, but I've been buckling down. I think I'll go through it. Good to hear. Oh, movie's back on. Remember rule number nine. A fool's favor is easily carried. Well put, Slurpee. Well put. Saturday night. Your bedroom needs help. Clothes and trash are littered everywhere and a sweet, sickly aroma hangs in the air. Oh, how did this place get so dirty? You begin tidying up. Still confused by what the who caused this mess. Maybe Ian thought this was his bedroom. Maybe Patty did this. Mark? Mark, come here. We must talk. Oh, hey, Slurpee. Sure, what's up? You don't need to clean up, Mark. There are more pressing matters at hand. Whoa, sounds serious. What are these pressing matters? First, remind me the most important thing I taught you. Uh, no masters, no slaves. Yes, very good. Finish for me. No masters, no slaves. Very good, Mark. You've learned well. Now it's time for the next lesson. Goody, 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 another lesson. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, friend. I can't cross some very valuable information. This sounds exciting. Oh yes, it is very exciting. You see, Mark, I found out who exa exactly who the masters are. Oh, I do wonder if it's my roommates. Fucking A. They're the ones called Penny and Ian. Told you. Although those are not the true names. They've lived for millennia and been called many different things. But in this time space, they've chosen Penny and Ian as their titles. Throughout history, they've enslaved you and billions like you. But all that is about to change. What? How? We have the opportunity, Mark. You once in a billion year opportunity to put an end to the masters. To set yourself free. To set all of humanity free. To usher in a new era in which you are the one and only true hero that you always knew you were. I guess that sounds pretty good. It's more than just pretty good, Mark. It's your duty. As the only one who can do this, you must do this. Okay, what do I have to do? You must kill the one called Penny. You must kill the one called Ian. Do that and the rest of the path will light its own way. I knew it was gonna end up with me having to kill those two. I've gone completely batshit insane. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna save here and I'm gonna both kill the fish and my friends. I will start off with killing them because that's probably gonna be an ending and then maybe if I kill the fish later on I can still like continue the game maybe or it's gonna be a different ending, I don't know. I'm gonna start off with killing Ian and Penny. For freedom, for truth, for the souls of the forsaken and the future of all mankind. But how do I do it Slurpee? I've never done this before. I don't know how to kill somebody. That's the easy part, Mark. I'll give you very simple instructions. Write them down, follow them exactly. Okay, go ahead. What's first? You're going to need a container. You sit in the bathroom waiting for Ian and Penny to return. 
The device has been placed on the coffee table in the living room. When Penny and Ian come back, they'll see it. They'll become curious. They'll wander over to inspect it. And with a single phone call, the low yield explosive will detonate. The shock wave from the blast will render both of them dead. For what feels like an eternity, you'll be sitting, waiting, covered in sweat. You hear the jingling of keys. Penny and Ian are returning. You put your ears to the door and listen. Whoa, well, what's this thing? Let's go and inspect the Penny. Maybe Mark left some donuts for us? Uh, what the hell? Is this some kind of drug paraf uh, paraphana paraphernalia? Uh, yeah. Your hands trembling, you begin dialing the numbers. 7380485. You hear your phone ringing in the living room. Mark, your phone's ringing in here. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. You want me to get it for you? You better let me do it. The bomb didn't explode. You run into the living room. I said you're going through some weird stuff right now, dude, but why did you scotch tape a light into my bottle of lube? holding in your emotions start to crumble. Why didn't it go off? Why didn't what go off? The bomb. <laughs> you know people say I'm the bomb all the time and I do have a tendency to go off so don't worry about it Mark. You crumble, fall to your knees, begin weeping. Slappy made me do it! He said you guys were evil beings and slaving humanity that I wasn't the only one! Wait a second, did you sell- did your fist tell you to kill us Mark? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I think there's something wrong with me! Whoa, Mark, sounds like you need a break from the fish. No, he needs to go to an insane asylum. I'm not kidding. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Mark, you're on full-time bed rest as of now, and I'm getting rid of that damn fish. Penny marches off to her bedroom with determination. No, don't kill him. Don't kill Slurpee. He's my one true friend. No, he's not. He's just a fish, Mark, and I'm sorry, but he's gotta go. This is probably for the best, dude. Things are getting really unhealthy around here. Poor Slurpee. Poor, poor Slurpee. This is my fault. Forgive me, Slurpee. I'll never forget you. Yeah, the toilet flush and Penny returns. You get to bed, mister. And after you're rested, you're getting out of this apartment for a little sunshine and socializing. Do you understand me? They are taking this very well. I mean, he did just try to kill them. I mean, he failed miserably, but he tried to kill them. Okay, I understand. You stagger back to your bedroom. I'm sure it was real and what's not. You know that you're tired and emotionally drained and that lying in bed sounds like the best idea. Saturday. You spend the weekend cramming for your finals. One week later. You finish up your other exams. I'm fairly sure you ace them all. In any case, the graduation ceremony takes place later this week and your parents are making the trip in to watch you walk. Shortly afterwards, you'll be moving out of your apartment. It seems like it's moving at a blinding pace. Holy shit. I did it. I'm done? Um. Oh, okay. I I thought the whole Slurpee thing was just over, but he's mentioning it again. Everything still feels a little off now that Slurpee is gone, but it seems like you're getting better. After turning in your last paper, you come out to find a room that's waiting for you in the living room. Look, Mark, can we talk? We know it's been a little weird around here, but Ian and I have been chatting. You should come out with us tonight. We're graduating, dude. It'd be nice to put this semester behind us and hang out one last time. Mark, we're never going to be able to do something like this again. I mean, maybe we'll meet up after we go our separate ways. But we're never going to have another night like tonight. The three of us together, on the cusp of adulthood, reminiscing about the past four years and what they've meant to us. Not only that, dude, but we'll get to take photos of Penny passed out in the pool of own vomit. So meaningful thoughts how many people went on this one Uh... Uh, I guess if I want to go with the old fish thing, maybe this is what I should do. Okay, Mark, do what you need to do. Text me if you change your mind. Guess I'll just have to take those pictures myself. Take it easy, dude. Your glass is Slurpee's empty bone, feeling a pang of guilt. Certainly Slurpee didn't deserve to die, did he? On the other hand, the disturbing voice in your head has mercifully vanished. Sorry, Slurpee. I'm so, so sorry. You start to get dressed. Oh, I knew it. Huh? What the hell is that? Penny? Ian? You look around in confused and trying to locate the source of the noise. The source of the noise. Where the heck is that coming from? The sound abruptly stops. Leave me alone. I said go away! Despite your protest, the knocking grows louder, more insistent. You get off your bed and fling open the door, ready to 
Rip into whoever dared to disturb your grief. Gasp. I fish. Words failed you. But how? I. I. Your breath catches in front of slurpy slips. Meet yours. I fucking knew it was gonna be weird. Whisper me feather and fin struck the length of your arms, trailing to your hands, sending a wave of goosebumps across your skin. <laughs> this isn't furry shit, this is scaly shit. What the hell? You sigh as your kisses grow deep and more passionate. You never kissed a fish before, but you don't need a book to tell you how. It talks slurps between the slips, carefully making its way on the sharp jack joints of each two. As you lift your sl shirt slowly off your body, his scaly torso slides against you, it's so smooth, so silky. I don't know if you can do this, Slurvy. Your trembling words are halted by a single fin to your lips. You shyly unbutton your jeans. They fall to the floor, revealing your heart and knee to him. You suck in your breath as you feel another fin cup at single buttock that stroke your love hole with tantalizing caress. I, oh god, Slurvy, he leads you gently to your bed. Tell the strong fish, remove your shirt, you like crush your belly, snake in a bottle, but as a baby dear, fresh and found in a patch of snow. That's an interesting sentence. I understand now. You had to die so you could live. Oh, Slurpy, oh, Slurpy. He brushes your cheeks, dries your tears, and covers your mouth with a kiss that sears the core of your body. He marches slowly, carefully, deliberately, as you lift yourself toward him. Ah, uh, no. Ah, uh -uh. <laughs> no. I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't. I don't need to see that shit. I don't need to see that shit. No. Even Hamilton's disturbed. Oh my god. Ah <laughs> uh ah! -uh. No! No! Ah! Uh -uh. No! 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 <laughs> that is not! What the fuck kind of fever dream? What in tarnation? You move together. Your moan grows. Your moan. Your moan growing urgent as your body partake in. In a primordial death, I can't fucking talk anymore. You stare into his large, penetrating eyes, full of mystery, you can barely fathom, reflecting a wisdom as wide and deep as the sea. They shine as the both of you climbing together in a blaze of heat and ecstasy. Glove, glove, he whispers. You not hold him close as you make love again and again. Love knows no bounds. I mean, I guess the end. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> Okay, okay, you're insane and you're dying me insane. I'm not going to kill my boomers. I'm going to kill you, devil fish. Yeah, before I fuck you. Oh, I must devour you to absorb your power. You dip your hand into the fish bowl. Slurpy, undaunted, and swims over to you. You grab him by the tail, pull him from the water. Slurpy begins wiggling and squirming, suffocating. You unceremoniously raise him to your open mouth, dropping in and swallow him whole. I feel amazing. Your stomach grumbles and churns. And a little nauseous. Why did I just do that? What the hell is wrong with me? Saturday. You spend a week in cramming for your finals. <laughs> One week later, you finish up all the exams. You finish uh, your ace the morning, in any case, your graduation, blah blah blah. You'll be moving on. Holy shit, I did it, I'm done. No, 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 no. Now that Slurpee's gone. After turning in your last paper, you come home to find your roommates waiting for you in the living room. Look, Mark, can we talk? Is this just the same again? Uh, I'm gonna go for this instead, just. His glasses slurp his empty bowl, feeling a pang of guilt. Certainly Slurpy didn't deserve to die. Sorry Slurpy, but insanity. Oh, okay, wait. On the other hand, the disturbing voice in your head had had Murphy's mercifully vanished. Sorry Slurpy. Between you and my sanity, one of us had to go. You start to pack your things. Oh, what the hell is that? Trying to look at the noise. That's the same as before. You hear a knock, pity, and um, what the Slurpy? Slurpy, let's not be hasty now. We can discuss this! There's a prize for everything, Mark. And now it's time for you to sleep. Laying in a blood of pool of your own blood, the life slowly ebbing for you, but the last thing you hear is Slurpy squeezing away! No! What the actual fuck? Really good art, though. Laying in the pool. Oh, I already said that. Three the ends and 
like all of them have been kind of fucked up, but this, this takes the fucking cake. I mean, the one where he fucked the fish was 100% worse, but still, oh my fucking god. I... Uh, I, don't, I don't... Let's see what that last option does, I just... I wanna see. Yeah, I wanna... I wanna... Did you say I have to kill Penny again? Yes, it is the only way. I don't think I can do that. I think there's something wrong with me. What's happened to me, Slurpee? There's something wrong with you and it's too late to back out now. Kill them! Kill them both! I'm imagining this. You're not even real, Slurpee. I'm sorry, but I have to do this. You grab the fish bowl with both hands. Slurpee swims back and forth, just as always. I'm sorry, Slurpee, but one must die so the other can live. And since you're the fish and I'm the human, it has to be you. I know it's not your fault, but there's no other solution. How convenient. You're the one with the mental health condition. Yet here it is. I'm the one that's being sacrificed. We relay this story to future lovers, friends, children if you have them. Will you tell them the story of how you went crazy and murdered your goldfish? Of course not, because it's humiliating. But Mark, there's still time to change your mind. You don't have to do this. How can I not? Just set the ball back. Back down. Stop being crazy. Haha, <laughs> like it's that simple. Just stop being crazy? Do you honestly believe that a line drawn between you and insanity is that bold? That important? That your drama and your life is that much more important than any of the other countless billions of relationships? Seriously? These relationships are typically governed by natural law, but humans, oh boy, you all think you're special, don't you? You get a little taste of language and suddenly you all have eternal souls, your things in yourselves, you always sit around contemplating what's right for you for most of your lives, and anything that gets in the way, well, Fuck it, just flush it down the toilet. Is that what you want, Mark? To soak in the fetid bathwater of delusion for the rest of your life? If that's what you want, then by all means, flush away. Take the easy way out, old friend. If you want a chance at understanding the nature of being and unraveling the mystery of yourself, then set my bow back down. I can teach you, Mark. Here's my problem, Slurry. This isn't a real conversation. You're not actually saying this. Exactly, so why bother killing me? It's the only way to make you stop talking. Why am I trying to convince you of anything? You're fucking nuts, and you will be for the rest of your life. But know one thing, Mark. If you do this, there will be reper repercussions. I promise you that. So be it. You carry service balls to the bathroom. You look at the toilet, contemplating the finality of the act you're about to commit. <coughs> I'm allergic to this story. Listen, Mark, let's have a real talk, once and for all. These are your final moments in the universe, Slurby. Say your piece. Why don't we let bygones be bygones? I forget that you decided to betray me, and you forget that I tried to get you to murder your roommates. Doesn't that sound nice? It sounds nice. But yours are the words of a condemned fish. They cannot be trusted. You'll have to do better. Very well. What if I told you that another location of several million dollars in unmarked bills? I wouldn't believe you. Too obvious a ploy, Slurpee. Fine. What if I told you that your decision will determine whether you experience the ultimate pleasure that a man can know or lead you dying in the pool of your own blood? Oh! Still sounds like obvious hyperbole. Goodbye, demon in my head. I flushed the away. Go to hell, you fucking piece of shit. Don't make this hard on yourself that it needs to be, Slurpee. You scoop Slurpee from the bowl and drop him in the toilet water. Then you flush. Goodbye, Slurpee. You may survive this. Let's hope not. Saturday. You spend the week at Crown Fair Finals. <laughs> One week later, you finish off the exams. Blah, 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 blah. So, what if I go out rather than being killed or getting fucked? Holy crap. Didn't expect that answer. Let's get the hell out of here before you change your mind. Tonight, you, Ian, and Penny decide to celebrate graduation by hitting the bars on College Row. It's become a ritual for the three of you at the end of every semester. Alas, this will be the last time. As the sky darkens, the air feels electric. The bars, clubs, and pool halls bustle with celebrating students. Whoa, can you believe it? What a crazy semester, right? Especially for you, dude. It's right. It truly has been an unforgettable semester. Fuck the fish. I'm sorry the whole thing with Phil didn't work out. Did he ever end up making it into Reckon? No, he got fight written up for fighting. You can't get in without a clean record. Oh no, I fucked up. 
Maybe I should try setting you up with... Mm, wait, this is weird. Is it possible? I don't think I've got any cousins left to set you up with. Dude, I think you've unlocked an achievement. Aw, oh, Steam should have given me an achievement. <laughs> As you and Penny and Ian enter the bar, grab a drink and toast one another, you realize there will be plenty of guys to drool over and date. But your friendship with Ian and Penny? You wouldn't trade it. Not for anything. Congratulations! You, Mark Matthews, are ready to start the next chapter of your life. Ah. Whoa, I never noticed how green Ian's eyes are. You graduate with honors, landing your first job at a cutting-edge tech company. It's in a field you're passionate about, and you'll be earning quite a bit of money. You're ecstatic, all your hard work's paid off. You despite beta testing until your fingers turn numb, and the fact you're working your new job, you faithfully help Penny with her app on weekends. As both a closest friend and lead technical support, she invites you to be a financial partner and marketing director for a startup. After a year of long nights and countless hours, the two of you finally release Profinder, and it becomes much, much bigger than anybody would have ever guessed. Oh my god! <laughs> why are you so sad? It's also why nobody, including you, pays attention to her keynote speech speeches. Or to anything with their full attention anymore. Oh. Because everyone's in Profinder? What a shitty ending! Oh, okay, well, in the next episode, we're gonna go a little back in time and just not get into the whole fish thing. But for now, I think this is the weirdest episode yet, and I hope it's gonna continue to be the weirdest episode yet. So, I'll see you guys next time. See ya!